In this video, we'll look at setting up simple keyframe animations for the purpose of translating elements of the wall house into and out of the picture plane. In the file currently on the screen, you'll notice that the items have already been animated. They begin by moving from off screen into the, the middle of the screen, approximately at the third line, and for some portion of time in the middle of our 180 frame span here, we'll see that the wall house is fully assembled, allowing us some amount of time to review it. This particular file relies on a couple of major principles of composition. Firstly, the primary subject matter resides at approximately a third line inside the frame composition. As well, the elements are animated into the scene from all four sides of the picture plane in a sense encircling the subject matter. These two rules of composition um, are generally accepted and more than adequate for a little study like this. Far more sophisticated things can be accomplished with uh, greater experience and practice. Importantly, you should be certain that you give adequate time for any of the elements to move into and out of the screen so that they seem credible. Also, you should give time to animating the items so that they have a sense of heaviness or lightness depending on how they're made and which direction that they come from. As a rule of thumb, if a figure is moving through an environment, they're going to move at a rate of about two and a half miles per hour. If you had a person walking through the scene that was moving at 50 or 60 miles an hour relative to the scale of the scene, it would obviously give you some scale issues and seem a bit awkward. So, in terms of planning out your project, be certain that you account for compositional rules, duration of animation for any of the pieces and parts, their basic behavior. Are they heavy? Are they light? Is it a human figure? Is it a mechanism? And storyboard and keyframe uh, on paper before establishing anything in the model. It's important to plan ahead. It saves you a lot of time in the end. Before commencing uh, the animation of this as a step-by-step -step tutorial, there are some key features of the 3D Studio interface we need to review. Firstly, you need to go to the Time Configuration button that's down here in the lower right-hand corner. It looks like a window with a clock in front of it. If we select that, we get the Time Configuration dialog. Two essential portions of this are the field for frame rate and the field for animation length. Inside frame rate, there are some predefined standards for video and film. All of our digital video will be using the custom frame rate at 12 frames per second, approximately half of that required for film. Be certain that your time display is set to frames. Underneath animation, we want to give a full length. All the animations start at frame zero and last some amount of time. Our animation is going to be 15 seconds long, and at 12 frames a second, that means we need 180 frames. Since this begins at 0 and ends at 180, technically we'll have 181 frames in our file when it's finished. The next important key feature in the 3D Studio um, keyframe animation is the timeline. Timeline represents the overall length of the animation, and you'll see immediately above it is a playback head. We can select the playback head and scrub from right to left through the animation and view this um, manually in real time. You'll also notice in the field immediately at the center of that playback head that it gives us the current frame and the total length of the animation. There are two arrows on either side and these can be clicked on to increment in one direction or the other inside the animation. The timeline inside the modeling environment allows you to see the keyframes that go with whatever happens to be selected. Should we select the wall of the wall house composition, we see a series of red tick marks inside the timeline. These correspond to keyframes that regulate the animation of the wall into and out of the scene. If we scrub through the timeline, you'll notice that at frame zero, and it's important to have a key at frame zero, somewhere off camera, the wall house is residing. It remains off camera until frame 60. There's a new keyframe which then establishes the moment at which the wall will begin to move into the scene. And the wall fully arrives at frame 75, and then we see the wall remains fixed for some portion of time, 
then there's a new keyframe where the wall begins to leave the scene and finally is off camera and likely remains fixed until the full 180 frames are completed. If we would select any other item in the scene that moves, we'll notice that likewise it has its own unique set of keyframes that correspond to the movement of that item into and out of the scene. Another important part of the interface that goes with animating is the playback head. And this is just like the video controls with your DVD player, your digital video player inside your computer, and your good old fashioned VCR. The field immediately below the playback head corresponds to the current frame of the playback head. You could simply type in a number here and have the playback head jump to a frame of your choice. Another important part of the interface that's essential to animating with keys are the auto key and set key buttons. If the auto key is turned on, you'll notice that the frame inside the modeling environment is highlighted in red, as is the timeline. This is basically a red flag to you that be careful. Any changes right now will actually produce a keyframe inside the timeline. You can override auto key and simply click on set key and force a key to be set. Uh, alternatively, one can be operating in the set key mode which allows you to make changes and then forcibly establish a key that goes with any change that's taken place. We'll come back to implementing these in real time in short order. The next important part of setting up a keyframe animation is the curve editor. The curve editor can be found by clicking on the icon here in the upper right hand side of the menu. If we select curve editor you'll see a dialog appears. Curve editor has two modes. It has track view mode and dope sheet mode. The curve editor mode basically represents the disposition of pieces and parts in space and time as a series of function curves. The function curves can also be manipulated to ease elements into and out of the scene at greater or lesser rates. The other mode of track view is dope sheet and the dope sheet allows you to see a matrix of keys basically as a collection of data elements. We don't see the disposition of items in space and time in function curves. Instead we see these as discrete pieces of data that can be pushed around inside a matrix. You can switch between the curve editor and the dope sheet with the mode button inside track view. Inside the curve editor we can see if we select uh, for example the wall we can see a profile of the wall through space and time. Time is moving from left to right. We have 0 to 180 frames. And the amount of translation, uh, rotation, and scaling, um, or other form of animation that might take place is measured vertically as some sort of value. The colors inside the curve editor correspond to the colors of the X, Y, and Z Cartesian axes, RGB, X, Y, Z. So this is the amount of change in the Z direction for the wall and initially it's off camera and resides at approximately 1100 and it's somewhere around frame 60 it enters the scene and descends landing somewhere just above um, a value of 300 and then at 105 then it begins to exit the scene and then resides once again somewhere close to 1100 as a value. If we want to see the same information inside dope sheet We'll move to Dope Sheet, and you'll notice now we see the wall and all of its constituent elements and the position in space, which is all that's changed inside the function curves. We see this as a set of keyframes, and those keyframes can be selected, copied, moved, and repositioned as a series of discrete values and data sets. We'll come back to manipulating information inside this environment shortly. So the video that will follow this, we will actually walk through step by step setting up the keyframe animation with a version of the wall house.